you are welcome to another episode of HN What's Your Say? The leading listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. While the government claims R. Kelly was involved with underage girls, the majority of the accusing witnesses we saw take the stand were nowhere close to underage. Many were in fact nearly elderly women who were way into their adulthood when they set out to meet with R. Kelly for the first time. Imagine a woman like Asante McGee who was 32 years old with a baby she left behind to slay R. Kelly also did appear on the documentary making endless claims against him. Another example is Kitty Jones who first met R. Kelly when she was a whopping 33 years old, and as the oldest supposed victim was still willing to appear in the documentary and make numerous allegations against him. According to her she was a huge fan of R. Kelly and she wants us to believe that she was starstruck at 33. And as if those are not enough, we also have a one Lisa Van Allen who in the 1998 trial had lied she was 17 the day she first met with Robert. When she returned with the same lie this time round she was busted and it was determined that she was actually an adult woman aged 18 at the time. As we can't mention all of them, we shall end with accuser Faith Rogers who agrees was 19 years old when she first met the R&B king. It's rather weird to learn that Faith Rogers who was an adult of sound mind also wants us to believe she was a victim of interstate trafficking, through her allegations that R. Kelly infected her with an STD without disclosure. It's sometimes hard to imagine that such adult women were also given a platform to make false claims against the R&B king, and to suggest that they did not know what they were doing when they dated him. Joycelyn Savage was wise enough not to engage herself in this campaign of destroying R. Kelly for she knew well she was 18 when she met him, and did not want to play cat and mouse like the rest who shamelessly seem not to care so much what the truth is. Meanwhile even the accusers who are said to have been underage when they first met R. Kelly, such as the government principal witness in New York Asriel Clary are said to have been only a few months shy from the age of 18. And to make her case even weaker, New findings suggest it was all a plot by Azriel and her parents to deploy her into R. Kelly's home to seduce him, and to line him up for yet another blackmail attempt which was her parents' core occupation. But like she revealed in the Gail King interview, when her father phone called R. Kelly demanding that he deposits $20,000 onto his bank account and he didn't, the family then threatened to sue in court which they have done with the help of government. When I first met Robert, my parents told me to lie about my age. So when I met him, he thought that I was 18. On top of that, when I was 17, my parents were actually making me, trying to get me to take photos with him, take sexual videos with him, all Our kinds Kelly? of stuff. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. And they said, because if they ever have to blackmail him, what they're trying to do now, they can use it against him. Considering the parents who claim R. Kelly sexually abused their daughter were this shady, and the same parents who claimed their daughter was a few months shy of age 18 allowed her to walk around with an ID that suggested she was an adult, we do not understand why the courts would believe their story, let alone the story told by their daughter after crossing over to the government camp. We can no longer be sure that when they say Azriel was still 17 they mean it, but shockingly the courts and the short-sighted media chose to believe this. Meanwhile even at 17 going to 18 by state laws in Chicago, a woman is a consenting adult just as is the case in New York. This being the standard documentation available all over the internet on legal websites and guidebooks, we fail to understand why the courts would ignore all this and charge R. Kelly for these such accusers whose ages until today are still not well documented and proved. Eliminating all sentiments and focusing on the facts as they are, R. Kelly's case should never have been addressed with such extremism like he killed somebody. Clearly in most cases the accusers were of age and sexual relationships with them were completely consensual, some others dared to lie they were underage and were caught. And even in the cases where we still believe some like Azriel could have been 17 going to 18, new text message evidence confirms that the parents had sent her on a mission to blackmail R. Kelly, and this could explain why they advised her to lie to Kelly she was 18. Besides her body alone could have represented an adult woman, and coupled with deceit and parental encouragement, how could he have known? These findings certainly do blur the line between criminal behavior and moral wrongdoings potentially complicating the legal argument. 
The fact that R. Kelly's legal team was able to demonstrate that some if not most of the relationships in question were with consenting adults and therefore consensual alone calls into question the severity of the charges that were levied against R. Kelly. This should reduce the gravity of the counts and attract either a reduced sentence or a total overturn of the convictions. Our country cannot be so involved in sexual matters as to lock up a man behind bars for 30 years, simply because he slept with consenting adult women who badly wanted to be with him for monetary and lifestyle gains. Some cruel enough even as to leave their little children behind so they could get a shot at living a simple life with a big-time celebrity. Why would we be punishing that? According to Marvelee's boss, the government is trying to save face considering nobody is coming out to say they have done wrong. They definitely have the wrong person in custody for the crimes they say he has done, and they owe him an apology after release. What we know for sure is that something greater is definitely coming his way. Whenever a blessing is in the corner, so many bad things can happen to you. But clearly, there is no such thing as justice in this country looking at the witnesses that were brought forward to against this man. Apart from being of age at time of meeting R. Kelly, their testimonies were all scripted but it's only now that it's all coming out. We hope you return home soon R. Kelly. We are eagerly waiting. According to Alma Hyman, during the New York trial, it was substantiated that witnesses told lies in the judge, prosecutor and defense's presence. It is at this point that the jury should have instructed a dismissal. We cannot be allowing lies in the courtroom I mean this is 2024. There is plenty about the R. Kelly case that remains questionable until today. In fact if the courts had been fair, some witnesses would never have been allowed inside the courtroom for they were clearly adult women when they first came into contact with the R&B king and should have known better. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.